Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in that. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Thank you very much. I want to, I want to share with us as brief as possible this message. I want to talk about kingdom citizens. Kingdom citizens. Today I pray that at the end of this message that you would have made the decision within yourself to become a citizen of two worlds, become a citizen of the here and the now, as well as a citizen of the by and the by, consider the hereafter. This profound text that I'm preaching today is tailored to fit every individual that would hear. The Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Life is filled with many decisions. And let me share with you, as I've shared before, in times past, decisions determines destiny. Especially in this case in which we are looking in this particular text, decision determines destiny. Some decisions we make, we, are, we consider significant, and some decisions we make is insignificant, or if I might say, not as important. But then there are other more essential, life-changing, life-altering decisions. Some choices that will change our lives forever. Every day, Every day in our society, we find that people make choices that not only change our earthly lives, but people make choices that change our lives as it relates to our eternal destiny. In this particular passage today, the text talks about two gates, two ways, two groups of people, two destinies. And there are two gates, one wide, one narrow. But I want us to know today that every man stands before the wide gate. The narrow gate is not necessarily seen. A person has to search for it in order to find it. Please listen. Stop shouting. It is both narrow and it faces the opposite direction from the wide gate. There are two ways or two roads to life. One easy, one hard. The broad and the easy way can be followed 
without thought. Just get on it. But then, the narrow way And the hard way requires commitment, determination, discipline, control, self-denial. But then there's two ends. The broad way ends in destruction and death. The narrow way ends in life and fullness of life to the highest degree. But there's also two travelers. There's the wise versus the unwise. The unwise, according to the Bible, the word we read, is many. They enter the wide gate, travel the broad way, end up experiencing or perishing in destruction. The wise are the few. Come on, write it down. The few search for, the few find, and the few enters the narrow gate. But there's also two decisions. When you talk about the two decision, you talk about no effort versus seeking to find. The wide gate requires no decision to enter. You don't have to knock. Just walk on in. All he has to do in the wide gate is to begin the journey in life and follow his broad and his easy, its easy course. But the narrow gate, I'm almost finished preaching. The narrow gate requires a decision to enter. And once you enter it, it requires a will to fight, a strong determination, and a sufficient grace to stand. <laughs> the Bible says, enter ye in is the striking and the clear decision that's got to be made. You got to want to enter it. John MacArthur, well celebrated author, loved reading his material. Statement on the two paths of life is very helpful when it comes to this argument today. John MacArthur says that there, there have always been two systems of religion in the world. And I quote, one is God's system of divine accomplishments. The other is man's system of human achievement. One is the religion of grace. The other is the religion of man's works. One is the religion of faith. The other is the religion of flesh. 
One is the religion of a sincere heart. The other is the religion of hypocrisy, unquote. Discipline, my brothers and sisters, is about choosing which path to take and to travel. One of the most difficult things in life existence is discipline. Discipline. We have to make choice. If I eat, I'm not going to overeat. If I spend, I'm going to watch my budget. Discipline. Realizing that money don't grow on trees until you get out on the limb. You write that one down. <laughs> Life is about discipline. And when we talk about discipline, my brother, discipline is about choosing which path to take as we travel. There are two gates with two different paths lead, that leads to two different kingdoms. One is the kingdom of the world. And the other is the kingdom of heaven. Christ calls us to choose one of the paths. And he gives us the description of each. Listen. The wide pathway is the road all begins on. Everybody, please get this. Everybody comes to the crossroad of making a decision. I remember a song that they used to sing when I was having good times. I'm at the crossroad. I got a choice to make. Everybody comes to the crossroad of making decisions. No decision needs to be made to enter the broad path. This is the path the entire world is on. Here's the point that you have to wrestle with in your mind. It's not a decision to get on that road. Decision, Reverend, is to get off. <laughs> when you get to a point that you have to talk to yourself and tell yourself I need to change my ways I need to take another path in life that means you're already on Broadway but you're seeking to get on the straight and the narrow the pathway is broad and spacious and easy to follow. And why is Broadway so easy to follow? Is because a lot of folks get on Broadway without thought. And the Broadway is very popular. Is because the crowds are on Broadway. And wherever the crowd is, becomes very attractive. Write it down. Don't hang up on me. When the Bible speaks, my brothers and sisters, about destruction, it does not just speak about eternal ruin. It speaks of life's journey. Destruction happens throughout the journey of life. The world from the biblical and the spiritual perspective is based on divine principles. When God made it, he made it with divine principles and 
uh, the act of obedience in mind. And when the principles are denied, it causes hurt, pain, depression, and death. But when we look at the narrow way, I'm coming to a screeching halt. When we come to the narrow way, the gate is narrow and the way is difficult that leads to life. And I started wondering about what makes the broad way so easy to travel, so easy to get on, so easy to maneuver through. Ain't nothing there. <laughs> I mean, when you really think about it, when you finally get to the end of it and folk go to talking about it, what's the language? Oh, that ain't nothing. It's because Broadway is just open path, but when you talk about it, the straight and narrow, what makes it difficult is because you start running into the principles of God, the thou shalt not. How to treat yours. Brothers, I heard that in Sunday school. How you, how you get from one point to the next point, that's what makes the narrow way so difficult then. So what happens is the narrow journey consists of conversion and sanctification. And when you talk about conversion and sanctification, then you talk about how God works in our lives, conversion and sanctification. Unlike the broad way, the narrow way, according to the verse 14, has to be found. He says right here, and few there be that find it. How many leave you alone? But it is the gate that leads to life. It is a gate, and while it may be small, we can thank God is not shut. Yes, Write it down. Yes, Jesus Christ has opened up this way by his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Yes, and not only is the gate small, we also find that it's narrow. Jesus said that the way is narrow that leads to life. It should be clear that Jesus is, is not simply a way. Yes, sir. Jesus is the way. The book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12, as I read you out of here, look what it says. And where it says, there is salvation in none no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. And the fact that we, and the fact that the way is narrow is, 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 could also indicate that we must come along and we must come empty-handed. This is the way we must enter the kingdom. We enter not in groups. You enter by way of individuals. Ain't nobody hoboing their way to heaven. You got to get there by yourself. On the straight and the narrow. This gate and way is narrow because it focuses on God's truth. God's word guides kingdom citizens. All right, that's enough. A final description 
of this way is that it is a way for few. Jesus said, few are those who find it. Maybe there's a few because only a few seek it. After all, Jesus told us that if we would seek, we would find. <laughs> and the reason why there are few who, who enter by this gate is that there are few who are willing to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. So he shares with us, enter ye in at the straight gate, and then he closes, I close rather, with Jeremiah 21 and 8. You shall also say to this people, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Our challenge today is choose life. Jesus said, John chapter 14, Verse 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I'm done, no man cometh unto the Father. Except by me. What am I saying today? I hope at the end of this message you will choose life. Because Satan comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said that I come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for abundant life in the here and the now and the by and the by. Why don't you, why don't you choose life this day? All you got to do is believe. Jesus is the son of God. Died for the remissions of sin. Buried in Joseph's new tomb. Resurrected on the third day morning. All power in his hand. Come on. Get on the straight and the narrow. Marvelous chance, why don't you come? It's a golden opportunity. Kingdom citizens. I'm a citizen of two worlds. I'm a citizen of the here and the now. But I'm also a citizen of the by and the by. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a citizen of this world and I'm a citizen of the world to come. But then I'm a recipient of the benefits that Christ will bestow upon each and every one who will accept him as their savior. He says, I give you life, and I give you that life more abundant. Thank God for his sustaining grace. Thank God for his favor. Thank God for his power. If there's one, will you come? Marvelous chance, golden opportunity.
make Jesus the center of your joy. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you for leading the principle before us that we can get on the straight and the narrow. We know that what makes that straight and narrow so narrow is because we're running into so many biblical principles. We pray now that your spirit will lead and guide us Thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for this gathering. Now we pray that your love, your grace, and your mercy will continue to rest, rule, and abide with each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In all of our lives, we face personal pain, struggles, grief, and despair looking, looking for hope and strength through anxiety and fear for family and friends new saint luke is here how can we pray for you.